God bless you. Bless you. Good morning, everyone. Greetings in the name of Jesus. Glad to see you all here. Good to be here. Amen. Don't you like Apostle Suit? Give him a stand. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Okay. Number one, I'd like you, first of all, I want you to go with me, please, to Acts chapter one. Acts chapter one. I'm going to read, I'm going to read you several scriptures. I'm going to be literally in and out. I hate to say that word, but I can't say it another way. We're going to Acts one, Acts chapter one. And I want to speak to you a little bit on the Holy Spirit and his giftings. One of the things that I must say right now is this, is number one, we're living in a time right now where the church is being defined by spiritual activities, not by a social agenda. And because that is the case, we have to understand that now the line is drawn between the natural and the supernatural. And you're going to find out the more seeker-friendly the church becomes, the less the Holy Spirit becomes involved in what we do. And so the whole, there has to be a reawakening in the church for the presence of God, the Word of God, and the person of the Holy Spirit. And so I want you to follow me very quickly. Acts 1.8 Acts 1, 8, and please follow me quickly. Acts 1, 8. I'm going to read to you one verse. Um, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. Stop right there. When it says you're witnesses unto me, what does that mean? Well, let me just give you a 100 hours in one sentence. When it says you're witnesses unto me, your witnesses unto the finished work. The Holy Spirit was there when the Lamb was slain before the foundations of the world. Hello? Therefore, when the Holy Spirit comes in you, he witnesses to you the cross, but the Lamb was slain from the foundations of the world. So that means when you receive the Holy Spirit, you are empowered to demonstrate the finished work. So signs, wonders, and miracles is based on the finished work. How many of you know your healing by those stripes we are healed? It's based on the... Okay. So if you remove the Holy Spirit from that, you can't do anything. Is that correct? So the Bible says now, but you shall receive power. After that, this is where the church gets stuck. It's in the after that. It says, after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses unto me. So everything, everything in the New Testament begins with the Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't come to the earth outside of the Holy Spirit. Mary was able to conceive him because of the Holy Spirit. So we have to understand that the Holy Spirit is involved. A lot of churches believe in the conviction of the Holy Spirit. A lot of churches believe in all the aspects of the Holy Spirit, but yet they deny his power and they deny his giftings. And so we understand then that the hope that the early church was born with the power of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Say it with me, the person of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, that then being true, I want you to go with me very quickly, please, now to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Praise the name of the Lord. Matthew, Mark, Luke. At least I think it's there. There you go. Matthew, oh, why is that Matthew? Um, sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Here we go. Now, hear now what Paul starts out by saying. And this is, a church, this is the church at Corinth. It was actually a mega church, unbeknown to a lot of people. The believers at Corinth were 50,000 people. Uh, what we today call mega churches, no, they had it back then. But the only problem is, is that they had all the gifts of the Spirit, but they had no order. Now, where there is law, there is no order. 
where there is no law. Let me give you an example. Where there, is, where there is gifts and there's no law, everybody tries to prophesy. Everybody tries to be whatever. And so you have to understand that even with each gift, there are certain laws. And when they are broken, like one of the first signs I say to people who are prophetic is this. Um, they say, oh, the Lord led me. I said, was you given a time? They said, yes, I was given a time. But I said, but the Lord led me. I said, well, let me give you a wisdom seed. The Bible says the spirit of the prophet is subjected to the prophet. I said, you can be disciplined. That's right. It's principle. What it shows is, is that you can't submit. Whoa. That's, that's the principle. If I am told to speak for an hour and I go beyond it, I can do that with his consent. After that, if I keep doing that, I'm ministering, but I'm ministering in rebellion. Because I've gone over what I was told. Do I make sense to you? So even with, so even with the gifts of the Spirit, there is order. Amen? So now at Corinthians, they were high. I used to call it corruptions. I couldn't pronounce the word. But um, at, at, at the church at Corinth, the people, were, were, the people were high on gifts but low on character. And so Paul had to start out now. Let me help you now. He said, now concerning spiritual gifts. And I, know, and I want you to know it's the first word he would say. He would say, I would not have you to be ignorant. I know, you know, I've noticed people, hear me, because you speak in tongues, it don't mean you know. Because you prophesy, it don't mean you know. Because you move in things, it don't mean you know much. Do you know how you know when you really know is when you're able to teach others? That's how you know. Because you have to know to be able to teach it. So till you're at the place to where you can teach, you really don't know. You're still learning. You never put a person to... to I better be careful, praise God. Get me, get me preachy in the morning. All right, praise the Lord. So then, let, me, let me just move on quick now. So concerning spiritual gifts, I would not have you big. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you, I know it's what you know. Wherefore I give you to understand. I give you to understand. Say it again now. I give you to understand. Well, how many of you know, do you know the word understanding is linked to faith? Not every. <laughs> The Bible says faith comes by, it doesn't say faith comes by listening. Not everybody that listens understands. If you hear, you've understood. Because the definition of the word hearing means to understand. So I'm giving you to what? Understand. But so what does that let you know about every manifestation of the gift? If it's tied to an understanding, it means every one of them is tied to your level of faith. So that means if I increase your faith, I can increase any sphere of gifts you walk in. The gift by itself doesn't function. It operates by faith. Let me help you something. Okay, I'm going too quickly. There are times gifts operates by way of the atmosphere. And there's times it operates by way of you stirring it up. Yes, that's Okay, there's a big difference. So here now what he goes on to say now. So I'm giving you to understand this. Say with me, I give you to understand. That no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities. Say the word now, diversities. Diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administration but the same Lord. And there are differences of diversities of operation, but the same God which worketh all in all. And then he then says, verse 7, but the manifestation. See, so far up until that point, Paul spoke about giftings. Now he's gone from giftings to now saying the manifestation. See, what if I said to you, you only have one gift? That blows apart religious theology. You say, what was the gift you received from God? You received from God the Holy Spirit. What you have access to is the manifestation. So for you to want manifestation without the person who has the manifestation, it doesn't work. 
So, to, so the manifestation of the Spirit is given to, oh, to one or two. Now, let me say it to you again now. Uh, let me just raise it. So to everyone is given what? How many people is it given to? So in, oh, hang on a second. Now. So that means for every believer. Now, whatever church group, whatever church background you come from, because we all grew up in times where in some churches, they'd say, no, it's for some people. <laughs> no, the Bible says the manifestation is given to everybody. You say, why? Because when you have the Holy Spirit, there's nothing you're not given to. So that means you're given to prophesy. You're given to, in, you're not ready, let me just leave you alone. You're given to interpretation. You're given to tongues. You're given to prophecy. Now, you're not, get me, Kosai. You're not given to anything you can't yield to. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. My God of mercy. Praise the Lord. For to everyone is given a manifestation. Now, here is now. But to one is given, and hear the expressions, and here now you have to understand when Paul's given the word, and then he starts to break it down by giving examples. Okay, hear this now. Are we ready? To one is given by the Spirit. Sorry, one. I almost was speaking in tongues, I'm sorry. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit. This, I can't get past this. Do you notice how Paul keeps emphasizing the same spirit? You'd think that he would have made his point by just saying it once or twice. But he's constantly reiterating the same spirit. See, when I see something happening and my spirit doesn't witness it, I don't try to witness it. I don't try to make God out of something that is not God. So Paul keeps, I better be careful. Perhaps I'm talking too much when I say this. There is a fit, now I'm just giving you wisdom. Please don't twist this in your understanding. Did you know there is a difference between foretelling and prophecy? But you see, if you don't know your Bible, you wouldn't know the difference. See. Praise the Lord. Hello. Hello. Yeah, all right. See, see, it's the same spirit. I'm, I'm going to say that to you again. The, the emphasis is the same spirit. I'm going to say it one more time till it's in your spirit. I said the same spirit. To another, to another faith by the same spirit. Another again, by the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same, by the what? Do you, know, do you know how many times he's emphasizing this? To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, deserting of spirits. To another, divers kinds of tongues. To another, the gift of interpretation. But hear this now. But all these worketh that the one and the selfsame spirit divide into every man severally as he wills. Now, out of the nine, let me just give you this quick synopsis. There's nine, you could argue, there's nine evidences of the Spirit. But in, in uh, depends on the background you're from. There's one initial. Tongues. In the Old Testament, prophecy was the evidence. In the New Testament, it is Tongues. And in the Old Testament, the Bible says that they will speak with a stammering tongue. Speaking of speaking in tongues when the church would be born. That's why if you notice when a child is born, a child isn't born speaking fluent English. A child's first speaking, he stammers. Do you remember when you first spoke in tongues? Most of you, you stammered. With a stammering tongue shall they speak. That's why some people get trapped in their tongue because they're not fluent. What happens is, as you keep pressing in, the language becomes fluent. So now, so now, tongues is the what? Initial evidence. Now, hear the words I'm saying. I didn't say it's the evidence. Yes, I agree. The evidence, the Bible says, is, but you shall receive power. 
You get a lot of people talking, but there is no power. Well, excuse me. So now, so here now is, so I'm going to speak to you a little bit now about tongues. All nine of them, they're all of God. But why tongues? Why do we emphasize on tongues? Let me read you some, let me give you some illustrations. Go with me please to 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13. Mm. And I want you to know there are different kinds of tongues and there are different usage of tongues. Case in point, let me give you a testimony. Let me give you a testimony. There are, there are known tongues and unknown tongues and there's diverse tongues and the Bible says there's tongues of angels. Case in point, every country I have been to, and I, and I say this before God Almighty, I don't have anything to, to, you know, to make up. You know, every country I have been to, one of the signs that God would give me is that when I'm praying in the spirit, I would catch that country's tongue. That's how I would know I'm sent. Is that I'm able to tap the atmosphere of that country. And all over the, now I don't see now I don't seek that sign, but I'm telling you that with me, that's a sign God's given. Like I can remember places I've been to where I'd where I'd, where I'd promise over the ministers, not even knowing. And they'd say to me, do you realize you spoke in an ancient dialect of our tongue? So how many of you know there's known tongues? That tongue is for a sign. I don't know the tongue. That country does. So there are different usages of tongues. But one of the, tongue, one of the aspects of tongues that God is bringing to the church now more than ever before is based on this scripture, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understanding all mis oh, hang on a second. Understanding some. I don't know if you hear me this morning. Some. Is it possible that one of the things that is containing the Lord, the Lord's return, is that the mysteries of God are not made known? Okay, you, you didn't get it, so I'll move on. Hear what he said now. Understanding, not some mysteries, all mysteries. Now, hear me clearly. <laughs> Can you understand God without God? Can you understand God without the Holy Spirit? So to tap in the mysteries of God, you have to know the Holy Spirit who knows the mind of God. So here what he goes on to say now. Understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Keep that in your mind now. Now go with me now quickly to 1 Corinthians 14. And hear this now. <clears throat> and hear this now. Verse 4, sorry, for, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1 and 2 and 3. Follow after charity and desire. Say the word desire. desire. Say it one more time. Desire. So the first thing you've got to do, if you're going to move in anything beyond what you're moving in now, the first thing that you have to have is a what? Desire. Now, if you are not hungry, hunger is a manifestation of desire. Because when you're hungry, when you desire, you will pursue. So, so you could almost argue, God puts the emphasis on you. God will give you no more of himself than what you want of him. So if you believe that you can have access to all the gifts of the spirit, to all the manifestation, now if you believe that, then you can. I'm not saying that you're going to, see this is the difference. It doesn't mean you're going to major in them. You have to know that you have access to them at any time when they're necessary. So he said, now follow after, so follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. In other words, the ability to, to know the will of God and plans and purposes and seasons for your life. For he, now, he, now goes down, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, he that speaketh in a what? Now, come on, hear it again now. What does unknown tongues do? Who are you speaking to? He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, is not speaking unto men, but he's speaking unto God. 
Is that correct? Yes. For hear this now. For no man understandeth it, understandeth him, how be it, say the word, how be it in the, say it again. Now, one of the things I teach people is this now. Now, when you're in the spirit and a man of God is in the spirit and you're in the spirit, let me tell you one of the manifestations of it is you perceive what I'm saying before I'm even saying it because you're in the spirit. You're in the same spirit of the revelator that is bringing the word. You tap that realm. Any manifestation you participate in becomes accredited to the ministry of your life. I learned that a long, long time ago. If you, wanna, if you want to really tap the supernatural, when you see a man of God ministering, remember, one of the things your spirit never forgets is an atmosphere. Anytime you walk into any place, wherever you go, you will always know the potential of what God will do because you know the atmosphere. Always remember that. God creates environments. We create atmospheres. So hear this now. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue.